What's up everybody? This is Animal from Wasted Attention and today I am going to do a little bit of an analysis, well an animal's analysis if you will, of the latest album from Clutch, Book of Bad Decisions. Um, before I get into this review, I have to do the shameless plug as we all have to do. Uh, we are Wasted Attention. We are an entertainment site that focuses more on music, games, bad movies from the 90s, just about a little bit of everything. Um, we have a website, wastedattention.com. We have Facebook, obviously, because who doesn't? Uh, Instagram and Twitter, so just make sure to go ahead and search Wasted Attention. I do have to do a disclaimer that none of us are professional at this. Um, we are just some lifelong friends that want to go ahead and review the stuff we like. It's an honest and gritty opinion on a lot of things. Uh, if we seem a little negative on some of the aspects that we go across, it's nothing personal against the band or the creators of anything. It's just how we feel. I feel that our opinions are valid. Uh, they're not bought, they're not sold. Unless you want to go ahead and sell, uh, just go ahead and DM us. We will sell our soul for like 20 bucks. Some Taco Bell Baja Blast, whatever you want. We also rant a lot, which I'm clearly doing now. With that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get into this review here. I have my little notes set aside as we all do. So if I'm looking away, it's not because I don't think you're beautiful, it's because I really need to just remember what I had said. Let's go ahead and get rolling. But first, since we're all over 30 years old, I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, put these bad boys on here, the John Davises. All right, Book of Bad Decisions, the 12th studio album from Clutch. Honestly, how many bands out there have that longevity to put out 12 albums? Most bands, I feel, hit their peak around the third or fourth album and either completely change their sound or just sound the same. And I'm not happy. But then again, not a lot makes me happy with music. I bitch a lot, just like all of you do. So before you judge, know that. Clutch. The first time I ever heard Clutch, it was the song Space Grass. Completely blew me away. I was never a huge fan of the stoner, doomy rock in the very beginning when I got into this, uh, you know, genre of music. Um, for some reason, man, that song just like, it hit me, man. If you've never heard it before, you need to check it out. Also, give yourself like seven, eight minutes long because that's how long you need. It's pretty trippy. First time I ever saw Clutch was at Rock on the Range 2015. We saw them on one of the second stages. It was freaking awesome. The band uh, put on an amazing set, um, blew me away. I had no idea what to expect from this band live and pretty awesome. The security had no idea what they were in for either because they were not fully staffed up there and let me tell you that pit just got butt to gut man. It was beautiful. I saw them a couple years after that opening for Primus in Milwaukee and that was pretty awesome too. Being from Chicago, I was not happy to be in Milwaukee but uh, the rave is a pretty cool place I have to admit. Got a lot of shit for wearing my Cubs merch. So, you know, it is what it is. I don't care. All right, guys. <clears throat> so, Book of Bad Decisions. I honestly want to start this review by saying this is probably in contention for my top three albums of this year. I can't stop listening to it. I don't even know how to break it down for me to say, oh, it's funky or, oh, it's kind of trippy. Like, it's been said before. I mean, it's fucking clutch. What do you expect, right? So my opinions, I don't really feel I'm going to say anything too standoutish that hasn't been said before about the band. I just, I love it. You know, honest to God, um, there's a lot of things in life that I'll listen to and I'm like, oh, I got to force myself to check it out again. This honestly has been on repeat in my car for the last couple days and I've been all about it. Some noting right here, so it came out in September of this year. Um, this was released on their own label, Weathermaker, which I had no idea that they had their own label. It's pretty sweet. This album came in in just about under an hour. Most of the songs were around the same length between three and a half to four minutes or so. What I really liked is that there was a lot of trombones, sax, and trumpets. I don't know if they've done it before. I mean, I'm kind of on the spot here. I know I've heard a lot of keys, at least, in Clutch before, but this album with that kind of stuff was a little bit different for me. I thought it was awesome. Something else to note, in 2019, I have read online, of course, don't know if it's true or not. Apparently, Weathermaker is going to be putting out all of Clutch's albums out on vinyl. 
If you're a huge clutch fan, that might be something pretty sweet to have. If you don't have a vinyl, you can just, you know, spend like $130 and just look at it and, you know, marvel in its glory. First song off the album, give me the keys. <clears throat> dug it, dug it, dug it, dug it. I heard this song a couple of months ago on Sirius XM's Liquid Metal as they were promoting the new album to come out. Um, really good hype song. I pretty much thought this is what the Clutch album was going to sound like. I was totally wrong. I just had no idea that this album was going to take the turn for what it did. This song to me was just very clutchy, really straightforward, you know, got the point across pretty quick. One of my favorite songs off the album was the second track, Spirit of 76. It had such a fat guitar sound. You, I don't even know what the hell instruments they play. Once again, disclaimer, we are not professional. I don't know um, all the equipment that they use, but it just sounds like it's a fat guitar and it's just dirty. For what I had wrote for that song was riff, riff, riff. That song for me, Spirit of 76, was just full of riffs. Dug it. It was probably one of my favorites. The snare drum, too, also was real fat and thick. From the south side of Chicago, we like them fat and thick, especially our roast beefs. Seriously, though, I do want to note that with this album, I don't know if they use different snares or if they just had it tuned differently, but there was a lot of songs where I noticed it was more ringy, and there was other songs where it was just kind of like that flat, real old school snare sound. I thought that was something worth mentioning. Book of Bad Decisions, the title track, I really dug that track. Um, lyrically, I think Neil is kind of a uh, philosopher in a way. He's one of those guys where he will have lyrics that you think you might know what the hell he's talking about, but then you find out that it's not. It's kind of like Chino from Deftones. I feel that some things are very straightforward, but then they can be interpreted many ways. Book of Bad Decisions, I really feel like he was telling a story here really really connected with me another favorite track for me was how to shake hands which is the next song very modern and updated clutch by updated i mean it just had more of a time signature that you tend to hear more these days than you did in the, in the past and it's very hard to explain but as a music fan uh it's something my ears had picked up i liked it especially the lyrical content you should really check it out at made me smile quite a few times driving home. Another good one, In Walks Barbarella. Um, it's kind of elaborating on that new twist idea. Uh, it's clutch, new twists. Um, they just sound different and I can't put my finger on it, but it was good. Really, really good. Really clean, really, really clean. Uh, next one, Vision Quest. Good song, it didn't really have that um, Oh, that clutch, you know, that real big punchiness that you're used to. I still dug it, though. Piano action was cool. I wrote that down. Weird Times, really ringy snare. Remember how I talked to you about that snare? This is one of those songs where I feel that it was a different snare. It could have been tuned differently. I mean, it's not hard to just go ahead and loosen it. But I'm telling you, it's just, I need to figure out. If we ever interview Clutch, I want to find out about snares. Neil's just got an awesome way of delivering a message, you know. Chorus was pretty good. I'm going to be honest with you, it was probably the best for me on this album, the chorus in that song, Weird Times. Emily Dickinson, guess what? That snare's different. It was way less ringy. Laid back, southern feel. I know that's a shocker. Wow, Clutch, they have a southern feel? Whoa! Uh, I don't know, man. It's weird for an East Coast band to have such a Southern twangy kind of style. I honestly thought they were from like NOLA when I first had heard of them. Maybe some of the band members are, I don't know. Unprofessional. Sonic Counselor. Around the two minute mark is when that song really kind of picked up for me. Saying the intro was bad, just really what clicked and made sense for me was around two minutes. It really started to take shape and also well, I kind of, I'm negating myself now because I feel like that song is super layered and maybe that's just what that first two minutes was, is just layering everything up. I don't know. I dug it. It's all right. A Good Fire. I will tell you right now, A Good Fire, Sabbath. Sabbath, Sabbath, Sabbath. That song to me was Black Sabbath 100% through. It wasn't like a direct mock-up, obviously. I'm not being a dick, but... I just thought it was really good, sounded like a Sabbath-y kind of song, held my interest. I would like to note though, when I saw them a couple of years ago, two years ago in Milwaukee, when they were recording this album, like for five or six songs, every time they would play a song they would go, oh this next song was written uh, while we were drinking beer and listening to Sabbath, so there you go, makes sense, right? 
Good job, Neil. Ghoul Wrangler. Um, this was interesting. The way that this song was put together and the way that it all kind of came out really reminded me of something off of Strange Cousins from the West. It's an older feel to it. I enjoyed it. Just had really... It just sounded like it could have been off that album. I don't know. HB is in control. I wrote Clutchy and Nice Build Up. I'm not being negative when I kind of am short with these songs, um, but it just sounded like Clutch. It was good, man. I mean, I don't know what more else I can say. Hot Bottom Feeder, Southern Feel. Wow, I wrote Southern Feel again. Uh, the tones on the guitar were really cool. The pattern that they were using um, after the chorus, going back in, um, it was just very pleasing to hear. It just made sense to me. Paper Strife, felt like the album was wrapping up for me here. So this song, what I mean by that is that this song feels like it could have been a closer. Um, just kind of bringing everything together is a lot of different elements from it. It was good, you know? Um, I would like to note though that that's pretty goddamn impressive that I'm 14 songs in and now I'm like, okay, we're good. There's a lot of songs like off of some albums where I'm like six or seven in, I'm like, Ooh, all right, that's, that's it, you know? The last track, Lorelei, I think it was the most unique sounding. Build up layers, clutchiness, just uh, kind of the same stuff. Honestly, this was a really, really good record. Clutch is a great band live. They obviously know how to keep relevant in uh, what their sound is and inside the genre. That's the weird thing about Clutch. You can listen to some of these tracks off here and be like, oh my god, they opened up for some metal bands or they played with fucking Primus. Like, I feel like Clutch is kind of like a, a really good band to have anywhere as long as it's in like, you know, I don't want to say a heavy metal genre because I don't even know if that exists anymore to be honest with you. Just in the heavier crowd, man, it's good, it's straightforward, recorded super clean, very, very impressed with it. I would honestly have to say, if you care to know, my favorite Clutch album was the self-titled album. Once again, another shocker, holy shit, somebody liked uh, that album. It was like probably, I don't want to say probably, it was their most commercially successful album. I want to say it was like 95 or 96, but hey, Space Grass is in there, so check it out. Thank you for wasting about 15 minutes of your time with me. I really appreciate you guys checking this out. Um, we say um a lot too. The thing is about this blog, this website, what we're doing, completely self-funded. We just want to be out there, man. We want to interview these bands. We want to talk to people. We want to interact. What separates us from the other local news, uh, Facebook stuff, all the metal blog websites? I just think we're fucking true to who we are. We have honest opinions. We are also musicians too, which you know might help, but not nearly to the caliber of some of these bands that we critique because then again, these guys are playing in front of thousands and thousands of people and we're sitting in the basement. Music means everything to us, man. It doesn't matter what genre you like, you shouldn't be separated by a um, by a classification, man. Good tunes is good tunes. I don't know, man. That's why I feel Wasted Attention is what it is. Check us out, wastedattention.com, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that fun stuff. Interact with us, play with us. We don't bite too hard. It's bad. We're also over 30, so you know, there's that. Anyways, take it easy. This is Animal, checking out with Clutch, Book of Bad Decisions. Adios.